Welcome back. We have talked about uh, classical statistics, um, all the machineries, you know, to calculate thermodynamic quantities uh, via the partition function and so on. Um, we uh, know that the partition function actually gets carried over uh, to quantum uh, statistics as well and we have used the grand canonical partition function. We could use the canonical partition function as well, but it is uh, better to use the grand canonical because uh, of uh, these number, the constraint on the total number of particles and that the ensembles uh, are allowed to exchange number of particles in addition to energy. So, uh, we have looked at uh, Bose-Einstein statistics and the important thing that comes along with is the Bose-Einstein condensation which happens in 3D for um, non-relativistic dispersion like a K square dispersion E as uh, E going as K square and we have seen that the ground state is macroscopically occupied below a certain temperature and this is called as a Bose-Einstein condensate and uh, there are uh, certain properties associated with it such as you know the, uh, the pressure is entirely due to the uh, excited state occupancies or the particles that occupy the uh, excited states and the ground state um, exerts no pressure at all and uh, for a Bose-Einstein condensate uh, it is only half of the classical pressure which is, which is very less. Uh, and um, then we have seen other quantities or rather other uh, you know physical properties such as uh, internal energy. We have looked at the specific heat and looked at discontinuity in specific heat and so on. Uh, now, we will talk about Fermi Dirac statistics that is the other uh, set of quantum particles uh, which obey Pauli exclusion principle. Uh, they have uh, anti-symmetric wave function they correspond to uh, spin angular momentum being um, uh, half integer and so on. Okay. So, uh, they uh, come in this uh, Fermi Dirac statistics, we have introduced that. Now, we will uh, talk about various properties of this and uh, we will try to cover these few things that are written here um, you know, uh, in this uh, class. We will talk about degenerate uh, free Fermi gas. So, what is the degeneracy limit and what does degeneracy mean actually? Uh, then we will talk about the Fermi wave vector, Fermi energy, um, the ground state energy and pressure of a free Fermi gas. We will of course, talk about the Fermi Dirac distribution, how it looks like um, that is the average number of particles occupying these single particle states, uh, how they look like and talk about the chemical potential, um, derivation of specific heat and so on and so forth. Okay. So, there are a uh, number of things that are on the cards. And once we are done with this, we will get into a little more involved uh, calculations of um, one is that uh, we will uh, calculate the paramagnetic susceptibility of these free electrons. Uh, this is distinct than the Curie's law uh, which you are aware of uh, which goes as 1 over T and we will show that the susceptibility is actually independent of temperature and depends on the, um, the density of states at the Fermi level. In addition to that, we will talk about stars, uh, uh, particularly white dwarf stars which uh, can be seen as uh, you know examples of heavily degenerate Fermi gas at. Uh, uh, so, uh, these are uh, very important uh, applications of Fermi Dirac statistics. So, we would still be talking about non-interacting fermions and their properties. Okay. So, uh, let us see that what is this uh, degeneracy and how it plays a role. And uh, so, this uh, whole idea of uh, uh, studying this Fermi gas is that uh, we should be um, able to apply it on metals. So, uh, metals are uh, there are a lot of free electrons which are not bound to the atoms and they are ready uh, to take part in the conduction phenomena uh, when you um, apply uh, voltage uh, on, the, on the material. So, um, for metals uh, typical uh, mass density. So, uh, mass density is um, you know of the order of few grams per cc. 
you can convert that into a kilogram per meter cube and so on. And um, uh, so that tells you that with this kind of a mass density, uh, the number of electrons uh, per unit volume is of the order of 10 to the power 23 to 24. So, let us write 10 to the power 24 and um, uh, this uh, tells you that uh, if you have this kind of um, a density. So, this is like a density and the density is like your total number of electrons divided by volume. So, if you take them to be spherical and consider the radius of those electrons uh, to be around uh, say uh, the volume is 4 third pi r cube where I, r is a radius, r is also the mean distance or the average distance between two electrons assuming that they are just uh, you know touching each other. So, uh, that gives you an average um, you know a distance between electrons. So, we are simply trying to calculate the order of magnitude and this let us call it as uh, our average and this uh, should be of the order of an uh, like angstrom or 10 to the power minus 8 centimeter. So, this is a typical um, inter electron distance uh, in a metal. Now, you know when you need the classical limit to dominate. So, the classical limit would dominate. Um, if this condition is met, that is r average should be much much greater than uh, lambda and um, this lambda is nothing but the thermal de Broglie wavelength which we have written several times earlier and it looks like this uh, at a given temperature t which is uh, t is in the denominator in the square inside the square root. So, this tells you that uh, this is equivalent to t to be much much greater than h divided by 2 pi and m k and r average square and if you put r average etcetera. So, if you put uh, mass to be mass of an electron and r average to be around um, this 10 to the power minus 8 centimeter with a value of k and uh, this Boltzmann constant and h. Then what you get is that uh, you get a r average to be uh, at um, you know. So, r average is of course, uh, 10 to the power minus 8. So, you get this t to be um, even much greater than 10 to the power 5 um, uh, Kelvin okay? or at least we write the t, t to be 10 to the power 5 Kelvin. So, even at room temperature okay, which is known to be our classical limit from the discussion that we had so far. Uh, it looks like that uh, the room temperature is far lower than this temperature. So, what you would have imagined as a, a classical limit, uh, so uh, uh, can be uh, you know the room temperature that is, uh, it, it should still be able to uh, be taken as t equal to 0. So, uh, this is like saying that the ground state is enormously degenerate. Okay, let me um, sort of make a box of this, it is an important statement. So, what we have said is that if you uh, really want that classical limit that we have applied to uh, say bosons or any quantum particle, if you apply that to fermions and uh, particularly to electrons, then what will happen is that the temperature at which you want the classical limit to set in, that is the classical limit would be valid at a temperature which is 10 to the power 5 Kelvin more than that in fact. Okay? Which means that uh, room temperature which is 300 Kelvin which is just about 10 square that is 10 to the power 2 Kelvin can still be taken as uh, room temperature. So, all temperatures all the way up to say room temperature can be considered as zero temperature because the scale that you consider with or the scale that you want your uh, quantum gas to go into the classical regime is extremely high. And we will show that in fact, the T f uh, called as a Fermi temperature is precisely of this order for all metals, okay? all known metals like aluminum, copper, 
and uh, various other things that you are uh, iron, uh, nickel, etc. This Fermi temperature is uh, very large, it is 60, 70, 80,000 Kelvin. For example, for copper, it is around maybe around 70 to 80,000 Kelvin by putting in all these values that we have just done. Okay. So, I think the argument is clear that um, almost all temperatures that are under consideration in which experiments take place uh, can be taken as zero temperature which means very low temperature and in very low temperature the quantum effects become very important and we should consider these electronic systems as quantum systems even at room temperature or uh, even a little more than that. Okay. Uh, we talk about room temperatures to be 300 Kelvin, even if you talk about 350, 400 Kelvin, it really does not matter. Even 1000 Kelvin is like 3 orders of magnitude, 2 to 3 orders of magnitude lower than the temperature scale that we have found out where the classical limit would be valid. Okay. So, uh, this is something that we uh, need to understand uh, and um, we are uh, sort of, let me uh, do a simple minded analysis of these Fermi systems and we can start with uh, say a particle in a box. Okay. And uh, you are all well aware of this problem. Uh, now, I just talk about a 3D box. Okay. So, the box is 3 dimensional box with uh, x going from 0 to l, y going from 0 to l and z going from 0 to l. So, okay. so you can uh, imagine a box, uh, you know a cubical box, but all its uh, uh, the sides, you know infinitely going large. So, that the particle is really contained uh, in between uh, 0 and l. So, the potential is infinitely large. So, we still have a box like this. Okay. Uh, call it x, call it y and call it z and uh, the particle uh, is contained in this and it cannot escape because the walls in all directions have infinite potential. So, uh, this problem is well known, I mean you have this epsilon k equal to h cross square k square over 2 m and uh, when you solve this, so k square is equal to uh, k x square plus k y square plus k z square and you have a k x going as so uh, this k x etc are quantized as uh, 2 pi over l um, n x and similarly for k y with n y and k z for n z. Okay. So, the quantization of this uh, problem can be expressed in terms of these uh, quantum numbers which can take values um, uh, all integer values starting from 1. Uh, there cannot be 0 because a 0 would mean that uh, there is no uh, particle in the box at all in any of these n x n y or n z and uh, we uh, start from say 1 1 1. So, 1 1 1 would be the ground state and then 2 1 1 or 1 2 1 or 1 1 2. Uh, is the first excited state and so on. And you see that um, apart from the ground state, now there is a degeneracy and this degeneracy is what we are talking about that is uh, the uh, corresponding to different quantum numbers which uh, correspond to different quantum states or wave functions, they have the same energy. For example, uh, uh, say uh, these uh, n x square plus n y square plus n z square it correspond to 6 um, is equal to 6, then we can have 2 1 1 uh, 1 2 1 1 1 2. So, uh, this is uh, these 3 are degenerate and this degeneracy uh, because they correspond to different wave functions. What wave functions do they correspond to? So, psi of uh, for this particular thing say uh, 2 1 1 uh, that corresponds to uh, root over 2 over L whole cube and a sine 2 pi x by L uh, sine pi y by L and sine uh, pi z by L. And similarly, the psi 1 to 1 would correspond to uh, 
root over 2 by L whole cube sin of pi x by L sin of 2 pi y by L and sin of pi z by L. Okay. Similarly, the last one which is 1 1 2 would correspond to root over 2 by L whole cube, I am so sorry, it should be whole cube and sin pi x over L sin pi y over L and sin 2 pi z over L. Okay. So, they have the same energy which is given by um, 6 pi square h cross square by 2 m L square. Okay. So, they have the same energy and that is why they are degenerate. Now, if you have a large number of particles which are now fermions okay, and uh, you cannot put two fermions in the uh, same quantum state, one electron can only occupy one state. Uh, so, that way if you start filling up and if you think uh, of uh, you know uh, homogeneously filling it up uh, starting from 0 that is nx equal to or rather uh, you know the lowest energy say for example. Okay, let us take nx equal to 0, ny equal to 0, nz equal to 0 that does not correspond to anything um, uh, physical, but say that is the origin of this uh, coordinate system in terms of nx, ny and nz. So, you fill them up uh, homogeneously from the center or from the origin and uh, this will uh, take uh, the shape of a sphere. So, in 3D it will be like a sphere. So, uh, and the sphere uh, if you have n particles um, in a volume V, you can, uh, you can fill it up all those uh, n particles within a sphere of uh, radius which is called as a Kf or the Fermi momentum. So, we are filling it up in momentum space because this n really connects to the momentum variable. Okay. So, we um, you know number of uh, number of allowed k points uh, within um, a radius k f and this radius has a special name called as a Fermi wave vector and will be um, you know used heavily uh, in all uh, uh, I mean all discussions of the Fermi system. So, this is called the Fermi wave vector and um, how many allowed values are there? So, we have a v over 2 pi whole cube and a 4 by 3 pi uh, k f cube. Okay? Uh, so, v over 2 pi uh, if you remember that if you walk a distance 2 pi over l you get 1 k point. So, uh, if you walk unit distance you get L over 2 pi k points and in 3D it is V by 2 pi whole cube if you want you get 1 k point and you multiply that by the total volume of the sphere and this gives you um, k f uh, cube equal to uh, divided by 6 pi square into V. So, uh, if you uh, equate this n equal to you know k f cube divided by 6 pi square into V that will give you the density and I will just by hand uh, multiply a factor of 2 which stands for spin degeneracy which means that um, there are spin up particles and spin down particles. Okay? Uh, we talk about spin half particles, so the spin angular momentum uh, is half. So, this is the spin degeneracy which is nothing but equal to uh, which is nothing but equal to 2 s plus 1. Okay? So, if you do a simple calculation of this uh, that is in order to find k f, you find k f to be equal to 3 pi square n whole to the power 1 third. Okay? So, that tells you that uh, if you want uh, more particles to be accommodated is just that the Fermi um, uh, momentum or the, the sphere, uh, uh, the radius of the Fermi sphere that just increases as n to the power 1 third. Okay? And uh, we can also define, so this is that uh, Fermi wave vector expression. Now, we define the Fermi energy. We will show in the distribution what Fermi energy is. So, Fermi energy is nothing but h cross square um, k f square over 2 m where m is the mass of these electrons. So, this is equal to h square over 2 m and we have a 3 pi square n whole to the power 2 thirds.
Okay, so that's the uh, Fermi energy. So the Fermi energy grows as uh, n to the power two third, which means that the um, if you have more uh, electronic densities or more number of electrons. Uh, then uh, you have uh, larger Fermi energy and so on. So, if you put this typical values of this n, which is as I said, it is about 10 to the power 24, put the mass of the electrons, the Fermi energy comes out as 5 to 6 electron volts. We will see that, okay. And that is a very large energy. In solid state physics, uh, 1 or 2 volts of energy, uh, electron volts of energy is uh, very, very large, and uh, uh, that is because 1 electron volt is equal to uh, approximately equal to 11,600 Kelvin. You can understand how large the temperature is because this is not even, you know, the core of the sun probably would have a temperature uh, something similar to that, okay. Uh, it is only the periphery of the sun is about 6,000 Kelvin, okay. And uh, uh, what is room temperature? So, room temperature is nearly 0. Um, 0 to 5 electron volt which is 300 Kelvin. So, what I do is simply uh, take the electron volt and uh, connect it to KT, uh, K is the Boltzmann constant and find T and this is just the you know hand waving or rather this is uh, almost uh, learned by heart that these are some of the numbers that we are interested in. So, while um, high energy physics talks about very high energy such as GV and TV and all that, uh, we are uh, very content with uh, these uh, scale of uh, you know energies like uh, one electron volt is a very large energy. And uh, you know typical semiconductors have an energy gap which is of the order of one electron volt or a little less than that or a little more than that in some other uh, semiconductor. So, you can never make a material conducting such as a semiconductor conducting by applying uh, temperature because you will melt everything in the universe by if you apply this kind of temperature. So, one electron volt of energy difference is very large energy difference, okay. So, uh, so this is the uh, you know the Fermi energy and so on. So, uh, these um, uh, we can find out the ground state energy for example, for a degenerate Fermi gas. So, uh, what we are trying to calculate is you call it E0 or Eg um, up to you, you can just simply you know uh, get this uh, 8 pi V over H cube and 0 to Pf, we are not writing in terms of uh, Kf, but you can write it in terms of Kf, we simply do this P square by 2m and we have a P square dp. Uh, so, this uh, 4 pi P square dp, the 4 pi has been taken out. Uh, this 8 comes because there is a 4 pi and then there is a 2 factor due to spin degeneracy and that is how this is. Uh, so, this is very simple um, integral, it is like uh, P4 integral, so you will get a P to the power 5 and so on. So, uh, if you simplify this, the uh, this ground state energy per particle comes out as a 3 by 5 epsilon f, okay. So, that is the uh, Fermi energy we probably have written down, yeah, Fermi energy is E f, epsilon f. Uh, so, epsilon f. So, it is uh, the ground state energy of a uh, free Fermi gas is very, very large, okay. And uh, it is uh, independent of temperature because there is no temperature that is, you know, equivalent to it. Uh, if you convert that into a temperature scale, uh, so the T f gives the temperature scale and which as I said is of the order of 10 to the power 5 Kelvin, okay. So, uh, if you want to calculate the pressure, so pressure due to the Fermi gas is uh, uh, call it a P0, so the at t equal to 0 or uh, we call it you know uh, the 
very low temperature because I said any temperature is like zero temperature, any accessible experimental temperature is like zero temperature. So, we write t equal to zero nevertheless. So, this if you calculate it uh, and use this uh, formula that we have derived a number of times, uh, at least for the uh, non-relativistic case we have derived it earlier which was two-third uh, u by v where u is nothing but the internal energy is nothing but the ground state energy here and this is equal to 2 by 3 into uh, E0 by V which is uh, 3 by 5 and um, EF and then this goes and it is something like that. So, it is 2 by 5 epsilon F and things like that. Okay. So, um, so this, is, uh, this is that uh, pressure due to uh, Fermi gas and as you can see that this is very large and uh, this uh, pressure is due to the hardcore nature of the particles. That is uh, they exert enormous pressure to another electron coming in the same quantum state and it does not allow at all. It is like infinite pressure so that no other particle can come and occupy the same quantum state and that is why this, uh, this energy is uh, so large and so on. Okay. So, this epsilon f really goes as n to the power 2 third and so on and similarly we can find out that how uh, this uh, this pressure ground state pressure with density goes as ok. This is very simple. Now, let us uh, talk about the Fermi Dirac distribution and in short we write as a FD distribution. And this distribution is very distinct from the uh, Bose distribution and it is at t equal to 0. So, this is at t equal to 0. Uh, this is that f of epsilon and then uh, you have epsilon and so on. So, it is uh, just a step function. So, for all epsilon lesser than epsilon f all the states are occupied. Okay. So, this is all occupied states okay. and all states here are empty. So, this is at t equal to 0 and what happens at t slightly different than 0 is uh, that uh, so, this f of epsilon uh, to be um, and now what happens is that this one slightly broadens and goes like this. Okay. So, say here there was used to be a sharp drop and now it got bent from there. Let me draw a little better here. So, it, it gets bent there and uh, a little bit of uh, spectral weight gets transferred to larger energies and now um, we call this uh, all the states uh, below mu are occupied. So, we have two things which is mu called as a chemical potential which we have defined before many times and in uh, various contexts uh, this chemical potential and we have talked about Fermi energy which is in the recent past. So, Fermi energy how are they related? mu is equal to epsilon f at t equal to 0 okay. and uh, at t not equal to 0 that is the temperature not equal to 0 Fermi energy is not well defined. Okay. And uh, so, basically the chemical potential is still well defined and which um, tells you or rather which defines the highest energy state that is occupied at any temperature still well defined. Okay. So, um, now uh, as you understand that uh, this really deviation from T equal to uh, 0. Uh, that is this uh, distribution becoming slightly curved from the top and then a bit of spectral weight is appearing at the bottom of the tail. Uh, this happens at large temperature and in fact, if you uh, simply talk about you know uh, increasing the temperature it sort of goes uh, I have to be a little careful because uh, it goes like this and so on 
And in the limiting case, of course, we know that uh, the classical statistics uh, would prevail. Um, but uh, we know that now the classical statistics in order to for it to prevail, we need to go to very, very large temperature. Okay. So, that uh, kind of temperature like 10 to the power 5 Kelvin, 10 to the power 6 Kelvin is not achievable in under any uh, experimental conditions. So, that is why we said that for all um, uh, this thing, all uh, practical purposes, uh, this uh, degenerate Fermi gas is considered as zero temperature. Uh, we still are not, uh, this has to be uh, smooth and so on. Okay, okay, this is probably slightly better. And um, so that is uh, where, uh, that is how the Fermi distribution looks like, that is how the uh, Fermi energy and the chemical potential are defined. They both mean the same thing but the Fermi energy is strictly defined at t equal to 0, chemical potential is defined at uh, any uh, finite temperature, they mean the same thing, they denote the, uh, the maximum, the energy uh, up to which the electrons uh, occupy and above which they are empty or you can say that it is the energy required to add one particle to the system because you see that is the maximum energy levels uh, which is occupied. All the energy levels that are here and here they all have one electron each okay? and if you are thinking of spin then they have two electrons each with one with up spin and one with down spin and all these are completely filled and for uh, you to add one electron to the system, uh, it cannot go anywhere but it has to go to the higher energies because by creating uh, more quantum states, okay, because there is nothing that is uh, available to them because they are completely filled. Think of a room that is completely filled and if someone comes, uh, that more space has to be created because this room would not accommodate uh, uh, this uh, an, an extra person. So, the walls have to be moved, it is just like that the walls have to be moved, wall of these step functions that has to be moved in order to accommodate extra particles. So, uh, that is the same uh, meaning that we have for. So, you know at a finite temperature if you want to calculate uh, uh, quantities, say for example, we show uh, this uh, say n, how do you calculate n uh, that is a 2 uh, of uh, f epsilon g epsilon d epsilon and this f of epsilon is nothing but the step distribution which is written as exponential beta epsilon minus mu plus 1. Okay. So, that is the distribution. Uh, this distribution um, is uh, important and has to be uh, distinguished with the Bose distribution uh, where mu had to be negative um, and uh, would be uh, only approaching 0 in the quantum limit, extreme quantum limit, whereas mu is positive here, uh, it is on the right side, mu resides on the right side of the diagram and uh, that denotes the largest occupied state. and. Um, and you have uh, this uh, at t equal to 0 uh, which is 1 over k t, uh, all states which are uh, uh, epsilon greater than uh, mu are um, unoccupied and all states which are less than mu are occupied. So, uh, this mu uh, at t equal to 0 is nothing but epsilon f. Okay. So, you can see this easily if you write this down as epsilon minus mu by k t and plus 1. So, if you put t equal to 0, this would like to be infinity, but only infinity when epsilon is greater than mu and uh, in that case this is equal to 0 because 1 by infinity is 0, the plus 1 does not matter. But if uh, t uh, is 0 and still epsilon is less than mu, then it is exponential minus infinity in which tells you that the occupancy is equal to 1 and that is why we see that step structure um, that you see here. So, I will just write that once again for uh, epsilon uh, greater than mu uh, f of epsilon equal to 0 for reasons that I just told you for epsilon less than mu f of epsilon equal to 1 okay? and it has a sharp discontinuity at t equal to 0 and this is very important and that discontinuity if you take a derivative of the Fermi function there it looks like a 
uh, delta function. Okay, so this is uh, elementary discussion about uh, free Fermi gas distribution and so on. Uh, one more important thing or rather uh, like a hand waving thing we can talk about and uh, we just draw this distribution once more and suppose if we want to know that what is the specific heat due to electrons um, at t equal to 0 or at t equal to you know 300 Kelvin as I said it does not matter. So, uh, you have to understand uh, that if you uh, a specific heat is the heat required to uh, you know raise the temperature of the body by a degree which means that um, uh, the electrons from this uh, region would be excited and they would go to the uh, higher energy region. So, uh, this uh, at a temperature T this uh, is width is like uh, is of the order of K T. So, they would come here and they would like go to this thing let me write it um, with uh, or they had make the hatches with a different sign. So, uh, the black ones is where the electrons come from uh, if you increase the temperature just a little bit and the red region is the ones that they go to or they occupy. Uh, at that temperature. So, this is of the order of uh, K T um, and uh, so this is the you know the so what is the fraction of these uh, particles that are excited it is K T by K T F ok, but T F is the Fermi temperature. So, each of these have an energy which is like K T and that is why this whole thing so the energy goes as T square and so the specific heat would go as T uh, that is the relation that we all are aware of ok. Um, in some sense that if you have studied Fermi gas before then you know the uh, the specific heat due to electrons is that the variation with temperature is uh, linear in T. So, uh, for a material uh, if you are doing an experiment and you uh, want to find the specific heat the specific heat actually goes as alpha T plus gamma T cube and this is the electronic contribution uh, and this is the phonon contribution that we have seen that is the Debye theory and this alpha t is the linear in temperature which we just shown um, in a hand waving way and can be derived ok. So, um, once you are familiar with this, uh, this is all uh, taught in the first course of solid state physics while you learn metals. Let me uh, go back to the this statistical mechanics of the free Fermi gas and the way we have done it earlier we will do it the same way. So, log of uh, Z g these are starting point as you have seen earlier for the Bose case this is equal to sum over i log of 1 plus z f exponential me beta epsilon i um, epsilon i uh, are the you know the single particle states z f is still the fugacity which is exponential beta mu and uh, we can uh, write this equation as equation 1. So, we can write down the uh, the number equation as this and there is a sum over i and this is like a sum over i and the, uh, the distribution. We are um, not uh, really writing the uh, spin degeneracy here, but you can write a factor of 2 if you wish. So, this is say equation 2. So, we uh, convert this uh, uh, summations into integrals and we can write down P over K T equal to um, this is uh, you can write uh, a G over lambda cube. I will tell you what G is usually it is written uh, with a G and G is that um, the degeneracy and in particular you may want to talk about the spin degeneracy. So, it is G over uh, lambda cube uh, F 5 by 2 you can remove uh, G also if you wish if you are not talking about spinless uh, if you talk about spinless particles. So, n over v is again g over lambda cube f of 3 by 2 z f uh, we are writing Fermi functions uh, Fermi integrals with f and uh, Bose integrals were written with a g 
okay and uh, uh, f of n z f that is a Fermi uh, Dirac integral is called as a Fermi Dirac integral. So, this is equal to 1 by uh, gamma n there is a 0 to infinity x to the power n minus 1 dx divided by uh, z f inverse uh, e to the power x plus 1. Uh, of course, uh, the connection has to be set that x equal to beta epsilon and so on and so forth. Now, this um, for a uh, small z f it has this expansion as uh, 2 to the power n plus z f cube 3 to the power n minus and so on. So, it is alternate plus minus plus minus. So, these are the this is the expansion in for small z f which uh, of course, uh, corresponds to the classical limit, but uh, then we know that in Fermi systems the classical limit all all accessible temperature regime uh, is actually falls in the quantum limit. So, uh, what is the internal energy of this Fermi gas? You know once after we have given an um, introduction to the Fermi Dirac statistics and so on, we are getting into this formal mode of uh, getting the physical quantities that is from the log z g uh, that is the statistical tool that we have developed uh, over this uh, last so many weeks and that is what we want to stick to. Otherwise, uh, every solid state physics book has a derivation in terms of uh, uh, for the specific heat or for say internal energy and ground state energy and pressure and this and that and so on. Uh, I think there was a uh, just go back and I believe there is a n missing here. Uh, so, that is I think uh, missing here ok. So, that uh, that n is the density. So, actually p 0 uh, goes as n to the power. So, this 2 by 3. So, 2 by 3 plus 1. So, this is like n to the power 5 by 3 ok. So, that is the ground state pressure. So, I uh, miss that uh, n which is the density ok. So, uh, the internal energy how do we get it? We get it using our very familiar uh, form which is log of z g um, uh, this del del beta log of z g and z f and v being constant and a little bit of simplification can be achieved when you do a del del t of um, uh, log of z g with a k t square there and z f v. So, this uh, can be written as 3 by 2 k t um, this uh, g v over lambda cube f of 5 by 2 z f that is the Fermi integral that we have just defined uh, in the previous slide. So, this Fermi integral with uh, you know uh, z f inside and n is equal to uh, 3 by 2 or 5 by 2 depending on whether you are talking about pressure or internal energy and um, the number of particles. So, this is the expression for uh, internal energy. Uh, Let us call it as equation. Uh, so, we have equation 1, uh, 2, 3, 4 uh, and we have uh, say for example, 5 and uh, we can we can use p equal to two third u by v. Uh, this is universally true for all non uh, relativistic gases and the factor is simply replaced by uh, the coefficient is replaced by 1 over 3 uh, for the uh, this for non relativistic and 1 over 3 is for relativistic ok. So, um, if you uh, differentiate 5 uh, with respect to you know uh, this let us call it a 6. So, differentiate um, um, with respect to t and use um, this formula again this formula uh, has been uh, or something very similar has been used for the Bose gas as well is del z uh, del t at a constant v. 
So, this is equal to minus 3 over 2t uh, f of 3 by 2 z f divided by f of uh, half z f. Okay. Um, now, the uh, Fermi integrals replace the Bose integrals. Uh, if you use this and uh, take a derivative of uh, u with respect to t, then what you get is the following. So, you get a C v equal to n k um, and uh, f of 5 by 2 z f divided by f of 3 by 2 z f and minus 9 by 4 f of 3 by 2 z f f of half z f. Okay. So, this is uh, equation 7, I hope I have written 6, okay, 6 is there, uh, this is 7, this is the expression for the specific heat at any temperature of a Fermi gas, you just have to uh, use these Fermi integrals to know their uh, the temperature, exact temperature dependence and um, the free energy of course, uh, you can write down the free energy, they are not uh, very important, but uh, sometimes uh, for some uh, particular reason that you may need this. So, a free energy F is equal to mu n minus P V and that is equal to uh, n k T uh, log of uh, Z G uh, Z F and uh, F of 5 by 2 Z F and F of uh, 3 by 2 Z F. Okay. That is your free energy. We are not doing anything uh, more with this, just getting the expressions in terms of the Fermi uh, distribution function or the Fermi Dirac integral. Now, um, to get the exact temperature dependence at all temperature, you have to expand this. Uh, and uh, for Zf to be small, it is easy because this all these things will become just simply Zf. So, Zf will kind of cancel and you can see that uh, it becomes 1 minus uh, 9 by 4. There are these things will, uh, will sort of you know, um, yeah, uh, this will go to 0 uh, rather this uh, f half Zf. All these will have to be calculated. I mean, they are general expressions uh, you know, uh, as a function of temperature and uh, that is why um, uh, so, this is the most general expression that you get it at all temperatures, okay? low, high, very high, very low and all that. Okay? And similarly, the entropy can be uh, written as, um, so the specific heat and entropy is written as S equal to U minus F divided by T, you got U and you got F both and then uh, divided by T which is simply nothing but uh, N K and then we have a 5 by 2 um, F of 5 by 2 Z F, um, F of 3 by 2 Z F and so on okay? minus log of Z F. Let us call this as 9 and so these are some of the expressions that you have. Now, um, they are of course, uh, sort of you know uh, the Fermi um, gas or rather we are interested in um, in most of the cases as low temperature properties of these things and in order to get the low temperature uh, properties, uh, we uh, need these forms of these uh, Fermi Dirac integrals and uh, the expression of the Fermi Dirac integrals as uh, you know uh, in the uh, finite but low temperature at t equal to 0 it is easy, but at finite and low temperature one has to do a Sommerfeld expansion of these Fermi function. Um, I mean I just write these Fermi functions or you call it the Fermi Dirac integrals um, which are really the, uh, the integrals that we have introduced um, are needed are needed at, at uh, low but finite temperature. 
and this is the limit that is of interest to us okay because uh, the properties of these systems are um, very important at low temperature because the quantum effects dominate at low temperature and very high temperature of course classical limits would dominate even if we uh, understand that uh, even room temperature is same as zero temperature for electron but what about other properties that are um, inter uh, you know twined with this they are uh, they are mixed with this so it's not uh, uh, so we we do these experiments any experiments in solid state physics is done at a reasonably low temperature to uh, see the quantum behavior to be uh, you know the, to be perceived so um, these things can be written as um, this f of 5 by 2 zf uh, this is equal to 8 over uh, 15 root pi. These are the Sommerfeld expansions. We do not get into the details of that. Uh, these are mathematical uh, properties and uh, they are uh, quite important uh, for many uh, usage and we will uh, sort of see but we will keep only the leading term one term after the leading term that is important because this one will give you exactly the behavior at t equal to 0. Anything uh, more than that you want uh, you have to go to one uh, at least one order and f 3 by 2 z f is equal to uh, 4 by 3 root pi and log of z f. Uh, 3 by 2 these are only given information they are not de derived if you really want to get into this you can look at this Sommerfeld expansion of the Fermi Dirac integrals but uh, they are only used the results are only useful to us and that is why I simply uh, write these uh, expressions and uh, you would only need them for uh, getting results at small but finite temperatures. So, f half these are the 3 that are involved and this is equal to 2 by root over pi and there is a log of z f to the power half and 1 minus pi square over 24 log of z f to the power minus 2 and plus all that other terms. So, if you want the uh, expression for the density of particles uh, simply take the f 3 by 2 and uh, put it in this n by v equation which is uh, 8 pi over 3 2 pi over uh, 8 square 3 by 2 k t log z f um, whole to the power 3 by 2 and 1 plus pi square by 8 log of z f to the power minus 2 ok. And there are other terms which uh, you may not want to write. So, in the 0th approximation that is at 0 temperature uh, we have said that. So, in the 0th approximation what do we have? We have the k t log z z f is equal to mu which is equal to 3 n by 8 pi whole to the power 2 by 3 and 8 square over 2 m and this is nothing but epsilon f ok. So, at t equal to 0 um, mu is equal to epsilon f which is what we have said earlier that uh, uh, they are not distinct and this is equal to mu and uh, so if you ne neglect all other terms you get this one term and that gives you this uh, kt log z there is a t that is missing here ok. So, that is um, your epsilon f and um, at the first order that is at a temperature that slightly differ from t equal to 0 ok. So, taking the first order correction to this. Um, we can get this as um, so we have this mu which is equal to epsilon f that is leaving the first term we have 1 uh, minus pi square by 12 k t whole square k t by epsilon f whole square and then there are other terms there ok. So, at 
t equal to 0, so put the second term equal to 0, mu equal to epsilon f which is what we have claimed. At t not equal to 0, mu deviates from epsilon f, we have said that, but how it deviates is shown here, that the first order correction to mu uh, compared to epsilon f is of the order of t square. And uh, this can be you know carried on to the internal energy as well. So, we can write down the internal energy expression is u over n is equal to 3 over 5 epsilon f 1 plus 5 uh, pi square by 12 uh, k t um, by epsilon f whole square and plus all that. So, what I mean to say is that suppose this is the ground state energy and this ground state energy per particle is 3 by 5 epsilon f. Now, this is easy to get because you have this uh, E 0 equal to epsilon g epsilon d epsilon and from all the way from to epsilon f at t equal to 0 ok known you get the first term. What is the correction? So, correction to uh, the ground state energy uh, would be or rather the total ground state energy at t not equal to 0, you will have to add this Fermi function here. And this is the function which is 1 divided by exponential beta epsilon minus mu plus 1. Now, uh, epsilon is simply you know epsilon and g epsilon is uh, epsilon to the power half and so on. And if you try to do this integral, it is going to be very difficult. Okay. And um, an exact solution is probably available because that is what people have done for a long time that uh, dealing with this um, integrals and trying to find a closed form for that. And uh, so, if you uh, wish to know that was the first order correction to this E 0 compared to the t equal to 0 value which is 3 by 5 epsilon f, this goes as 5 pi square by 12 and a correction which is of the order of t square. So, if t is not to small that is uh, if it is not cannot be neglected then include it. And if you are really at very low temperature then of course, you can suppose you are at 50 Kelvin and you know the classical limit is at 10 to the power 5, 10 to the power 6 Kelvin and uh, so I mean classical limit with the epsilon f which is what uh, you compare it with. So, if k t is like say 100, 150 Kelvin and epsilon f is like um, you know, uh, 50,000 or 1 lakh Kelvin or uh, you know, uh, 0.1 million Kelvin, then of course, it, uh, it can be neglected. But if you are still at say 1000 um, Kelvin or you know, 5000 Kelvin uh, safe for that kind of temperature, then uh, that uh, thing can be uh, included. But of course, there is nothing called 5000 Kelvin in the experimental realm. Okay. So, we can uh, uh, in that case we can uh, neglect it, but at least it gives you the first order correction to the t equal to 0 result. Okay. And similarly for the pressure, so this p is equal to 2 third u by v and this is equal to 2 fifth n epsilon f a result that we have already seen and it is 1 by 5 pi square by 12 and k t square by epsilon f whole square and you have other terms which can safely be neglected. Okay. So, the leading term always gives you t equal to 0 result in all the cases that we have seen and uh, so the C v uh, finally can be uh, written as it is uh, n k um, pi square over 2 and a k t over uh, epsilon f. So, this is a result that we are interested in and C v for a fermionic system or an electronic system at low temperature it goes as T q. Okay. So, um, this is by and large you know the story uh, of thermodynamics for a free Fermi gas okay. and uh, it is very important to uh, realize that uh, even at room temperature we are really talking about the Fermi gas as if it is highly degenerate 
and at very low temperature that is at t equal to 0. If you want any correction due to this really t not equal to 0 and t equal to 300 Kelvin or at least 150, 200 Kelvin, you can, uh, you can consider these corrections to these expressions of pressure, internal energy, uh, number of particle etcetera that we have just uh, given. Okay. So, um, uh, we uh, shall stop here and continue with some more applications of this Fermi Dirac statistics and as I said one of them would be the paramagnetic uh, or the Pauli uh, uh, susceptibility uh, of due to the free electrons and uh, we will also talk about the white dwarf stars. Okay. We will stop here. Thank you. Thank you.